What's up guys, I'm Joel Dodge. Welcome back to the channel. So Bias Effects 2 Mobile has come out with their MIDI update and I'm gonna show you how it works right now. So guys, before we get into Bias Effects, I, um, I just wanted to tell you guys that the iRig Blue Board is not working anymore. And if you wanna hear more about that, I have a video on it. Um, but in the meantime, I am looking for a new MIDI controller to use when I'm playing through Bias Effects. Um, so two that are interesting to me. First off, the X-Tone Pro um, looks really cool. And then the other one that I've been looking at is the Mellow Audio MIDI Commander. Um, I've never used either one of those. Um, those are just the two that I'm looking into right now. But in the meantime, I, I am going to show you how Bias Effects 2 MIDI works. So we're inside of Bias Effects 2 now, and there's two main ways to MIDI control inside. First off, you can click on a specific pedal, amp, or effect, like these effects racks and stuff. If, if it has a knob inside of Bias Effects 2, you can add MIDI to it. Even this compressor, with all those knobs, you can come and add MIDI controlling to any of them that you wanted to, which that in itself is really cool. The way you add it is you hold down on it. I'm gonna show you with this, I'm gonna reset. Um, you just press this learn button. Um, you're gonna see this pop up and then you're just gonna move whatever you want it to be mapped to. So I just mapped, <laughs> because my blue board isn't working, I just mapped it to my modulation wheel on my MIDI keyboard. <laughs> but you'll see, um, oh, I canceled it, my bad, done. Um, you'll see that I can turn the volume up and down um, with my modulation wheel now. That's how you put MIDI controlling on a specific effect. You can even do it with the amps. All that is all that is really cool. The other method for MIDI controlling is to come into the live view. There's, there's a few things that are cool about coming into the live view. The first one is um, you can actually control the looper. So you can click the looper and this is gonna give you these controls on your feet. So you can record, play, undo, clear. You can save all those to buttons on your MIDI device, right? Um, which is really cool. Um, the other thing that's really cool you can do that I did here is you can save a scene. And what this does is it takes you to like a smaller uh, window of your rig that you have open. And then you can make changes. So like for this one, I just added this mouse, I turned this mouse drive on and I named it mouse. And then uh, you just press save. And basically this, this scene will just turn the mouse drive on for me. Say if I wanted to, with this mouse scene, um, if I also wanted to like turn my reverb off, let's just say, um, you, you know, it'll do both of those at the same time. The last thing that I think is worth mentioning is that you can save MIDI to these preset buttons, right? And it's gonna save it to that button. So for example, if we were to make this MIDI 2, right? And we press okay, so this is MIDI 2 now. If you flip with these arrows, it's gonna take you to a whole different set of presets. And then if you click on this button, you'll see that it's still MIDI 2. So it saves it to that button, right? So you can flip with the arrows through presets. I hope that makes sense, but Basically, you can also map MIDI to these arrows and it's gonna allow you to flip through all the presets that you've made within a specific bank, right? So this is my user bank and I can flip through all of these with my MIDI controls. So the part where you can flip through banks, that's actually something that they used to do in the original bias effects as well. I think the biggest difference now is that it's also gonna save your beats per minute with that bank. So um, let's just change this real quick, I'll show you. So 111, we're gonna overwrite this. And now when you flip between these two, you can see the beats per minute change. 
So that that's something that the original bias effects couldn't do is save the beats per minute. And that's going to be something that's really cool for people who are using this for live performances is you'll just be able to save a preset with the beats per minute of a specific song and you'll be able to flip through those presets. And on top of that, you'll have your scene saved for those specific presets. So it really does open up a lot of possibilities here. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't, please subscribe. But as always, die empty. I'll catch you in the next one.